This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Got some important topics and big news to share with you. So we'll go over this article right here. Stimulus check update. Will disappointing jobs data lead to a fourth stimulus check? We'll talk about the $3.5 trillion stimulus package and the latest with that. How Democrat centrists have sent demands over to Nancy Pelosi. And there are actually three reasonable requests. I'll let you know what those are. I'll play you a video clip from a Biden advisor talking about how everything is a going, going according to plan and full steam ahead. We'll talk about the $15,000 home buyer credit, then I'll answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Hope you're having a great Monday and a happy Labor Day to you. If you appreciate these fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below. And as you may notice, I am back in my home office. We're back from our trip. I'll play you some more video clips and give you some updates later on in the video from our trip. But first, let's get into the news. So a new COVID-19 variant called Mu that might be able to evade immunity from vaccines has been detected in almost every U.S. state. So I reported on this last week, and I think it was only like three states that were that have found this new Mu COVID variant. So currently, the Delta variant is the one that is taking over everywhere, but the Mu variant is the next one that they're worried about, which means that even if you're vaccinated, it doesn't matter. You could still catch it. Uh, so what's going on here? What they know about it is the new COVID variant called Mu might be able to evade immunity people get from vaccines and the move variant has been detected in 47 U.S. states and District of Columbia, according to data from Outbreak.info. Only Nebraska, Vermont, and South Dakota are yet to detect a case, the data says. Uh, keyword here, yet. It seems like this can't be contained, especially if you're vaccinated. Looks like this new variant, Mu, is just going to take over everywhere. Let me know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. They're still trying to learn about it uh, and see how dangerous it is. Uh, so we don't know too much about it. We just know that it has spread almost everywhere as of now. Uh, if we look at the COVID cases now, it's sort of tapering off. It's not as big as a spike as it was before. Uh, still in uh, yesterday, as of some September 5th, 44,000 cases and then 66,000 cases, but usually Saturday, Sunday or less. The day before that, 191,000 cases. So cases are still on the rise. Uh, next, let's talk about what's going on with this 3.5 trillion trillion dollar stimulus package so biden advisor says full steam ahead on 3.5 trillion dollar package despite mansion warning talking about how joe manchin said that he is going to put a strategic pause on moving forward with this package uh here is the clip of the advisor talking more about it Construction really does highlight the need to counter the consequences of climate change, and they are countered with the infrastructure projects and the bipartisan bill passed uh, by the Senate, the broader proposals, and the Democrats' $3.5 trillion uh, bill. But this week, Senator Joe Manchin argued to put a hold on the Democrats' bill, and he can't pass without his support. Doesn't that put both proposals at risk? We're going to keep working on both proposals. If, you know, People have said from the beginning that both proposals were uh, dead on arrival. People said that they would meet challenges. Well, that's what we do as an administration. We meet challenges, we keep working, we keep our head down until we get, until we get things done. And we saw that with the American Rescue Plan, and we're going to keep doing that with the infrastructure bill. But people should see now more than ever how important it is to have resiliency and to shore up our electrical grid and invest in our infrastructure. And then on the reconciliation bill, the Build Back Better bill, it's important to address climate change. These once in a century storms are starting to come almost every other year. They're bigger, they're stronger, they wreak more havoc. If you look at New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, people should see what the climate change is doing, and we're going to address that in uh, our legislation. And the president created this legislation over a year ago. So he was ahead of this, and now we just need Congress to come along with us so that we can protect the American people and then invest in them. But you read Senator Manchin's op-ed. He said he's not for it. He says $3.5 trillion is too much. He's not going to vote for it. It can't pass without him. He's, look, Senator Manchin is a valued partner. We're going to continue to work with him, but we're also going to continue to push our agenda. And part of this, uh, George, is just the sausage-making process, and it just happens, and this is happening uh, in public view. But it's, it's not abnormal for this to happen in the legislative process, and we're, we're still full steam ahead on trying to get our legislation passed. Isn't it also going to be harder for the president to get this passed now that he's got a majority disapproving, according to our latest poll, of the job he's doing as president? 
No, I don't think so. I think what really will happen is people will start to realize uh, what we need, the challenges that we're facing. We have to uh, really take an assessment of what the American people are dealing with right now. They're dealing with COVID and the Delta variant. They're dealing with <clears throat> Hurricane Ida. They're dealing with a number of things, and we're, we're meeting the challenges, and I think people appreciate that. Does it always uh, bear out in poll numbers? Maybe, maybe not, but I've seen and I've done this a very long time. The leadership that the president providing uh, is appreciated, will be appreciated more, and you get ups and downs, and we're not worried about poll numbers. We're worried about the 1.2 million people in Louisiana that didn't have electricity. We're worried about the people in New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania that are going through it. So this has never been a president who worried about himself. He really worries about the country. So we're not worried about poll numbers. And the president will do the hard work to garner the support of, of his party. And that's regardless of anything else. What do you think about Biden's advisor, Cedric Richmond, and what he said? Uh, let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments below. Next, let's talk about how two Democratic centrists send Pelosi demands for $3.5 trillion mega bill. So these are three requests that they send, which I think are pretty reasonable right here. So the requests include that the bill be pre-conference with the Senate to avoid having to make any major changes in either chamber, that the bill be paid for with the exception of its climate provisions and for members to be given at least 72 hours to review the legislation before it comes to the house floor so i think the first one is really important because that'll save a lot of time pre-conference with the senate meaning that the house and the senate both agree on the bill so that it could just be passed because usually what happens is the senate will come up with one version and then the house will change it then the senate has to vote on it again then maybe the senate changes it then the house has to vote on it, and they have to vote on the same bill so if they pre-conference it come to an agreement on the bill that'll save some time uh, and then the other two requests I guess are usual standard uh, procedure but let me know your thoughts on that hopefully we finally get this done personally as an independent I could care less who is pushing forth these bills I just want people to get the stimulus that they deserve and speaking of stimulus uh, let's talk about this article right here so stimulus check update will disappointing jobs data lead to a fourth check so we've, before we get into this article quick reminder here so this came out a few days ago jobs report disappoints only 235,000 positions added versus ex expectations of 720,000 so for the month of august there was only 235,000 jobs added which was kind of a big alarm for a lot of economists especially since they thought it was going to be around 700,000 so uh, basically through this article it's saying that this these job numbers could push more for a fourth stimulus check but it might not be enough so if we look at when we got our last stimulus checks the economy everything was a lot worse it was sort of uh, pre-vaccine when it was fully rolled out when we were getting all those stimulus checks uh, as of now uh, it's I feel like there still needs to be more serious things going on for a fourth stimul stimulus check. In terms of going out to SSI, SSDI, veterans, RRB, I feel like that's a separate category and regardless of the general fourth stimulus check, there should still be a lot more help for those categories of people because they're suffering a lot now. Uh, next, also this article came up too, this came out on August 2nd, actually. Stimulus check update. Could pandemic surge make the case for more checks? If we look back at the cases of what's going on here, uh, the surge is definitely up there compared to how it was here. We're not even in flu season yet. And especially with the move variant, how we spoke about that uh, and how it could be completely... Uh, it doesn't matter. It could completely evade immunity from vaccines. So... I don't know, there's some serious stuff going on right now regarding uh, the call for a fourth stimulus check. I think once we get to the point of a lockdown, then they're really going to push it hard. But as of now, it's still not in the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. Uh, when we look at the change.org, $2,000 per month to every American petition, it's currently at 2,858,000 signatures. And next, let's talk about the home buyer credit. So I keep getting questions about this in the comments, and I want to address what's going on with the home buyer credit. So Biden's first time home buyer tax credit, what it means for buyers. So what it's saying here. With home sales and prices surging across the country, first-time home buyers are finding it especially difficult to achieve their dreams of home ownership. U.S. Representative Earl Blumheimer and Representative Jimmy Panetta 
introduced the first-time homebuyer credit in April of 2021 to support first-time homebuyers with a tax credit. This act is known as the Biden First-Time Homebuyer Act because Joe Biden promised a $15,000 first-time homebuyer credit during his 2020 election. So let me repeat that part right here. Joe Biden promised a $15,000 first-time homebuyer tax credit during the 2020 election. So President Biden already promised this, and a lot of representatives, as I mentioned before, are trying to get this into the $3.5 trillion stimulus package. It hasn't made it in there yet, among many other proposals that they said would be in there. They're still kind of working out the details. So when it comes to this home buyer credit, basically, if you are a first time home buyer or you haven't owned or bought a house in the past three years, then you could still be approved for this program and get $15,000 off of uh, as a tax credit when you buy your home. There's another one that helps with the down payment. I think that's around 25,000. So in terms of the home buyer credits, looks like those are still in limbo. We have politicians who are pushing for them, but it hasn't made it into the stimulus package and there hasn't been any other times where they're gonna have a vote on it. So that's what's going on with that. Next, I'm gonna answer the questions you leave for me in the comments. Maureen Simmons. Can we have a strategic pause on Manchin's wife commission until he approves new stimulus? I love that question because uh, if you're not aware, Joe Manchin, who is the one who wants to have a strategic pause on the stimulus package, his wife is getting $1 billion for her commission, but that's in the physical infrastructure package, which seems like it's gonna pass, but it's being held up until the $3.5 trillion stimulus package passes. So great question there. Um, I, I think that would be a good solution. Next question comes from Rose Earnhardt, why can't they just pass the stimulus? Why do they have to include all this other stuff to get stimulus? Uh, yeah, I agree. They, usually with these big bills, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, because personally I'm an independent and both are both do dirty things, but they all put all these sneaky things in there because they don't want to pass it as a standalone. They don't want it to get a lot of public attention. So they throw these sneaky bills into bigger trillion dollar packages uh, so that it could pass uh, when all the people really want is just a stimulus. Uh, next question, Evelyn Melendez, whatever happened to the adult tax credit? Are we still going to get it? Please would like to know. So the adult tax credit would have to go into the $3.5 trillion stimulus package or pass this year. It's not officially passed yet, but to take advantage of that where it's like either $4,000 or $8,000, you wouldn't uh, get the benefits of that until 2022 when you file your taxes. So hopefully they could pass that before uh, 2022 this way everyone could get that four thousand to eight thousand dollar adult tax credit or earned income tax credit which is also another word for it uh, anyways that is all the stimulus news i have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit here's my daughter bella's tip of the day hi guys this is bella this is the tip of the day i want to tell you something what you should always do so like when you like when you want to do something do it like if you want to go out in outer space do it if you want to say something do it Say whatever you want and do whatever you want and make it excitement. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. So we are back in South Carolina, back home. So we went on a trip to Florida and Georgia for a few days in each state. And we tried to make it the most memorable birthday for our daughter, Bella, as possible. So she turned eight years old on August 28th. And we wanted to do a bunch of fun things. So we took her to uh, a hotel by the river and she did some uh, sailing. She did some stand-up paddle boarding. She did the trapeze. We also took her to Georgia where there was a lot of activities there too. She did like a ropes course. She did rock climbing. She went bowling. A little, it was like mini bowling. And we tried to make it really, really fun for her. And she loved it. At the end, we said, was this a good birthday? She said, yes, she loved it so much. So at eight years old, I feel like that's when we usually remember a lot of our birthdays and remember things in general compared to any younger years. So I feel like the first few years were practice. And now that she's eight years old, this will be hopefully a lasting memory that she'll remember forever and if not at least we have the pictures uh, anyways if you want to check out any of my other videos you could click up here for my other channels or down here for more stimulus updates and I'll see you in the next video take care be safe thank you for watching